The mousetrap car project is one of my favorite ones in physics because it incorporates all the major concepts that we learn in the first semester. So we have to deal with speed, velocity, acceleration, forces that are acting on the car. Where do we want to decrease friction? Where do you want friction? Um, and most importantly, transfer of energy. We want to convert all of the potential energy of the mousetrap into kinetic energy of the car. So we have two races that we do. We have a long distance race to, at first, and then we have an exact distance race. So on the exact distance race, we want the cars to go exactly five meters. So based on their results from the long distance test, they either have to get it to go further or they have to apply a brake of some kind to get it to stay at that five meter mark. Uh, we want a distance car, so kind of slow and steady kind of wins the race here. Um, these are not speed cars. We want to go, we want to maximize our distance, not our speed. So in this case, we want a longer lever arm. Uh, we want to make sure that our wheels don't spin out on the starting line. And we want to reduce the amount of friction in the moving parts, just like any other car you would want, you know, you would have. You'd want to reduce the friction on those moving parts to maximize its efficiency. So there's lots of different ways you can do this. You can have three wheels, you can have four wheels. Um, you can put the mousetrap in various spots, whether you put it towards the front, you put it towards the back. You make a longer lever arm, make a shorter lever arm. So students really have to think about what they're trying to accomplish and put it all together in one product. Um, these cars this year, they varied a lot. So they weren't all the same. We had a Pringles can car. We had, uh, some cars had three wheels. We had some that had four wheels. Uh, we had lots of things that I saw they were using for lever arms. Um, they all did very well on, on, in this, this race this year. So I have to commend them on all doing a good job on that. Um, typically, the biggest problem we see is getting the axles straight. So their race course is only three meters wide. So at any point after they leave the starting line, if the car goes outside of the three meter racetrack, that's where we mark it from. So the biggest problem that they have to overcome is getting the car to go straight. And there's a lot of different things that factor into that. Uh, the other thing that they have to think about is to keep the car from slipping off the starting line. In order for students to get a 100%, their car has to travel at least eight meters. So eight meters is 100%, and then the grade drops, and 95% is seven meters and down. So of course, we do the long distance test first because we want those cars to go at least eight meters. So the five meter test is just kind of an arbitrary length but I like to use that because to, to begin with, they're all focusing on the maximum distance. They're all going for that eight meters. And then I want them to try to think about how they have to change it to get it to not go as far. So getting it to go further is easier to think about than getting it to go a smaller distance. So that's the reason for the five meter mark. So on that test, um, for every three centimeters, the car ends from five meters, they are docked one point. So all cars start at 100 points. For every three centimeters away from five meters they are, they lose one point. If the car goes over five meters, it's a five point deduction and then back to the one point for every three centimeters. So it is very technical and we take a lot of time to measure those accurately when we do that. Now this is one of my favorite um, projects just because it puts everything together. Um, they have a lot of fun. Um, the other thing is students tend to doubt themselves on this a little bit and I really like to see the kind of the, the pride and triumph they have when they get the car to do what they want it to do.